want to tell you about the time we went on a mission to Mars. Everyone talks about Mars, but we decided not to just talk about it, but just do it. Before the landing, we carefully listened to the information about the challenges of such a flight. We set up a backup communication channel with ground space services, just in case. We've never done all this with my friend before. However, mom insisted on doing everything the right way. Our flight was approved and entered into the main registry of space flights. But it turned out that there was an unknown creature on the rocket and it changed all our passwords. Later, after checking the cameras, we found it on board. You can see it on your screens too. What is this creature? Where did it come from? And where did it go? Remained a mystery for us. Maybe it somehow hitched a ride with us on Earth, knowing that we were flying to Mars and quietly left the rocket as soon as we landed on its planet. But we didn't expect the multitude of problems that awaited us. It was the toughest challenge in our space career. We were lucky that Daniel's mom didn't allow us to go so far on our own and decided to fly with us. But we didn't expect the multitude of problems that awaited us. She immediately inspected to make sure our captain was wearing his spacesuit correctly. To be honest, he never really dressed correctly before, sometimes not at all. Mom also made sure that all the instruments were calibrated. When we got closer to the red planet, strange things started happening with the rocket. Of course, it wasn't designed for such long journeys, but in our case, there was something more. It seemed like someone had hacked our main computer and we lost full control of the spacecraft. The rocket began requesting passwords for everything from us, and the old passwords no longer worked. Maybe the Martians themselves didn't want any visitors. Keep watching and we'll tell you everything as it unfolds. Captain's mom studied mathematics at the university so she could help us solve complex equations and decipher all the passwords. It was really exciting. When we opened the auxiliary manual control, we found mysterious numbers on it. Our new captain's assistant was able to figure out certain patterns in these random numbers, and we managed to open the door to the next compartment. But there too, all the instruments went out of control. The rocket acted as if it had a mind of its own. Even the captain's quick access gloves didn't work. Mom checked them on all scanners, but the onboard computer didn't obey her actions and commands. Even the captain's metal spare keys didn't solve the problem. We had to urgently reboot the entire system, but doing it during the flight was risky. What if we couldn't turn it back on? It would be easier on Earth, but in space, the risks are much greater. Our first task was to repair the oxygen supply so that we could breathe comfortably. How did it happen that one of the hoses was tampered with? Maybe it happened during takeoff? This has never happened before. Daniel took out his pocket flashlight and shone it where mom needed to connect the hoses. 
suddenly, we felt that the pleasant fresh air started flowing into the compartment again. The whole system started working. Hooray! I, little Martian Danny Rari, was so excited, and this joy really cheered me up. But how do we reboot the entire system? To do that, we need backup power, like solar panels, for example. The rocket made an emergency landing. When Daniel and his mom double-checked all the parameters and ensured that the rocket had created a livable environment around it, they opened the doors outside. Daniel was the first to jump out. And just in case, his mom put on her helmet. What if the instruments were showing the wrong data and there was no oxygen outside? Then, mom wouldn't be able to quickly grab her little boy and rush back into the rocket. I would have to carry them both inside with my little hands since I had stayed in the rocket all this time. It turns out we landed near a Soviet station that was sent here decades ago and communication with it had long been lost. So, Daniel used their Soviet generators to power our rocket with extra voltage. Daniel found old wires on the ancient Mars rover, and we manually connected everything we needed. Indeed, about half of the instruments started working. We were able to establish communication with Earth. But instead of immediately preparing to return, we decided to explore what happened to the old Soviet rover. Daniel connected a cable to our onboard computer to crack the door code, and lo and behold, the door opened. On the floor, Daniel found secret disks on which unusual figures and lines were inscribed. They were mysterious slabs, or some kind of hard drives. We had never seen such data storage before. We brought them into the rocket and placed them on the scanner table. Of course, we were waiting for some kind of miracle, but the code on these tiles turned out to be too malicious. Instead of a pleasant surprise, we got an unpleasant turn of events. The code hacked our computer and activated the self-destruction mode. Initially, there was a small panic among us. I, little Martian Danny Rari, was the first to rush out of the rocket and was ready to settle on Mars waiting for the next human expedition to rescue us. Daniel also covered his ears with his hands because of the loud siren. Only his mom continued to search for a solution. She had only two minutes to find the right solution and stop the rocket's self-destruction countdown. I, Danny Rari, heard nothing but the commotion inside the rocket as I stood outside on Mars. At one point, I became so scared that I hid inside the Russian rover. Somehow, my little boy and his mom managed to find a solution. Apparently, they rebooted the entire system once again. I saw a huge power piston descend and rise again. Daniel and his mom went outside on the Martian surface once more to call me inside. Made sure nothing was obstructing our rocket from taking off again, and we closed ourselves inside the rocket. What's the conclusion of this expedition? Our rocket can't fly so far. It wasn't designed for interplanetary travel. When we return to Earth, we will definitely go buy a new rocket designed for longer journeys. We completed our first reconnaissance flight to the Red Planet. In the next expedition, we'll bring a rover with us. It will be a very exciting adventure aimed at searching for valuable minerals, treasures, water, and possibly living organisms. Subscribe to our channel 
and you'll be the first to see how we conquer Mars. Until next time, subscribers!